Hi guys, welcome back to the Brawl Gap Rod. And shooting projectiles is a pretty cool thing to do in games, right? So today we are going to see how to shoot them in a first person perspective. This is also one of the most requested things by people who got my projectiles package from the asset store and from my patrons as well. And I'm also going to show you the easiest way possible to make them art. So the projectiles move in this way, so they have this cool motion. And yes, those are some very wonderful ants. I know, right? Beautiful. Anyway, I had a blast creating these, so I also made quite a few variations of the projectiles, the impacts, the trajectories. All of these, this whole project is available on my Patreon page. Your support will mean a lot, and I'll have the link in the description. Alright, so let's see how we can shoot these projectiles in a first person perspective. So, super quick overview. In my scene I have a game object, this FPS character, to move around and shoot with these awesome ants. With a character controller, that I believe comes with Unity, where you can control the radius, the height, and so on. And then I have this first person controller script, to control the speed, the speed jump and the gravity. That if you want you can go ahead and copy. As a child I have the capsule, the main camera, I then created the beautiful low poly arms, fascinating. Right, so let's go ahead and start by creating an empty game object. And I'm going to reset the transform and then create, as a child, a particle system. We are going to use the particle system because it's simple. Let's press F to focus on the particle system. The start speed is going to be zero. And we don't need start speed because we don't want these particles to move around. We want this to have a duration of 1 second as well as a start lifetime of 1 second so it loops seamlessly. And we don't need rate over time because we want a burst of one particle in the emission, right? We also don't want shape, so let's turn that off. And let's choose any color, I'm gonna choose a purple for this. And now the second element that we can add is a trail renderer. You can control the wide here, I'm gonna set it to 0.5 and then add a key so the trail has a different shape. Now the time is the duration of the trail, it is set to 5 seconds, but I'm going to decrease it to 0 0.15, that's enough. Let's reset the transform. Now for the color this is a gradient and I'm also going to choose a color that matches my beam particle system, right? And that's it, we have created the projectile. We just need to create a prefab out of this, drag and drop to a folder and we can delete this one from our scene. And we can go back to our scene. And now let's create a script that is going to shoot the projectiles. I'm gonna disable all of these that I had here and drag the new script to the FPS character. Let's open it up and the first thing we want to do is check if we are pressing a button, the fire one button. Which by the way, if you go to your project settings, to the input manager, you will see that fire one button is set to the left click mouse and even to work with a joystick. Well, then we want to call a function named shoot projectile, which we are going to declare down here. First, we need to detect where is the center of our screen because since it's a first person shooter, we are going to shoot towards the center, towards where we are aiming, right? So we are going to create a ray, and this ray will need a camera. Let's create a public variable, call it cam, just like this. And then we can use cam.viewport point to ray, where we'll create a new vector, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. And what this basically does is create a ray from the center of our screen towards the horizon, basically towards where we are aiming. And then we need a raycast it. A physics dot raycast. We can pass in the ray. And then we can output the information to the raycast it with the keyword out. Basically, we are saying that if our ray hits any collider, we are going to set our destination, which is going to be a private vector tree. We are going to set our destination to hit dot point. If it doesn't hit any collider, 
we can set the destination to ray.get point. We are going to get a point on that ray as far as 1000. You may need to adjust this value, by the way. Right, so once we know towards where we are aiming, we are going to call a new function, instantiate projectile, which we are going to declare down here. And this function needs the projectile prefab that we have just created. So let's create a public game object called projectile. What else we also need? We also need to know the fire point. So we are going to create a public transform called fire point. But since we want our projectiles to be fired from the left, from the right end, and then from the left and so on, we are going to need two fire points. One is for the left hand fire point and the other for the right hand fire point. Right, so down here now we can say var, which is variable, projectile object equals to instantiate. What we are going to instantiate? Well, we are going to instantiate the projectile prefab. And now the next thing we need is where, the position. Well, the position is going to be left hand, then right hand, then left hand, right? So let's create an input here, a transform fire point that we can use down here in the instantiate. And then quaternity.identity, which is the rotation of the prefab. And then as game object. Oh, and this is red because we need to pass the position, the vector tree. So how do we make this shoot from the left hand to the right hand and so on? Well, we create a private boolean, call it left hand. And then we say if left hand, then we are going to instantiate our projectile in our left hand fire point. And we say left hand equals false. If not left hand, then left hand becomes true. And we instantiate our projectile in our right hand. Right? And it's as simple as this. If we save this, if we go back to our inspector now, we can assign the variables, the camera, then the projectile prefab. And in my case, my left hand fire point, that it is right here at the center of the left palm end. And I did the same for the right hand. Once we assign the variables, if you press play now, and if we shoot, you will notice that the projectiles are being instantiated on the left hand, then on the right, then on the left, then on the right, and so on. But they are motionless. So in order for the projectiles to move, we need to add a sphere collider to the projectile prefab. So it detects collisions later on, but most essentially a rigid body, where we can turn off use gravity. You can leave it on if you want to try some cool effects, but I'm going to turn it off. And then we need another script for the projectile. Right, we are going to attach it right here. And then press save. Now in our FPS shooter script, we can get that rigid body and say that the velocity is going to be equal to the destination, which either is the hit point or a point far away in our array, minus our fire point dot position, which is our ends. And we are going to set it to normalize it, which goes from zero to one. We just want the direction. So we can multiply it with the projectile speed which is a public float that we can set to around 30. If we save it, if we test it, now we get our projectiles flying, which is nice. But they bounce around. So the next step is, is detecting collision, destroying the projectile and instantiate an impact effect. So in our projectile script, we are going to use void on collision enter open brackets, collision. And we are going to say first that if the game object dot tag is not the bullet and not the player, basically we don't want our projectile to collide with our player and with other projectiles as well. So let's go to our inspector and for example, in my left and in my right arm, I'm going to assign the tag player. And then 
for projectile prefab, don't forget to create a tag, call it bullet, and then assign it to the prefab projectile. Just like this. Now back to our script. If the collision is not the bullet, neither the player, we want to destroy this game object. What we also want to do is make sure that this collides only one time. So let's create a private boolean, call it collided. And once it's collided, it becomes true. And up here we can say that if it is not collided, so it collides only one time. Let's save it, let's test it, and as you can see, every time the projectile eats something, it gets destroyed. And that's great, that's what we want. Now for our next step, as you may notice, if we hold the fire button down, it only shoots one time. And there's an easy way to fix it. If we go back to our FPS shooter, we can create a fire rate by saying that we only want to shoot if a certain amount of time has passed. We can do it like this. And we say bigger or equal than time to fire, which is a private float that starts at zero. And then we increase it, and then it starts counting. Then we can say that the time to fire equals time dot time plus one divided by the fire rate. We only need to remove this down here because get button down only works in the specific frame that we fire. We want get button, which keeps on detecting as long as we press the button. Now if you press play and if you test this, you have a fire rate that you can control and it looks nicer, right? It's awesome. All right, so before creating the impact, like I said, I'm gonna show you an easy way to arc, to make the projectiles arc, right? The easiest way is to go to the asset store and search for iTwin. iTwin has been around for a long time, but, and I find it super easy to use. So add it to your assets, and then in Unity, you go to Package Manager, to My Assets, you refresh it, you can show more packages, and then you can import it. See, all you gotta do is go to the FPS Shooter, and down here in Instantiate Projectile Function, we want to say that iTwin punch position, we are going to punch the position literally. By the way, there is a bunch of functions inside these iTwin scripts. I really recommend you to check out this site where you get a full description of each function and it's super easy to animate stuff. Right, so we are going to use the punch position method where it asks for a game object target, which is going to be our projectile object, and then the amount. The amount in this case is going to be a new vector, open brackets, the x is going to be a random range between public float arc range, which is going to have a default value of one. And we are going to say minus arc range, common arc range. It's going to go from minus one to one. And this is only for the x, now we can copy and paste this for the y. And for the z, we can say it's zero. We don't want to change the z. For the time it takes to animate this, we are also going to set it to random, between something like half a second and two seconds. And if you save it, and then press play, you will get this really cool effect. And believe me, this is super easy compared to other methods for arcing projectiles. Alright, now, moving on to the impact effect, we are going to create an empty game object, and we can actually drag and drop our projectile and duplicate the beam and drag it to our impact game object, delete the projectile. And this beam, we need to reset the position. And we are going to use this size of our lifetime curve. It's going to go from big to small. By the way, if you want to learn more about particle systems and effects, I highly recommend you to check out this course that I made in Udemy. You will learn much more about particle system, visual effects for games, and more. I'll have the link in the description as well. So back to our beam flash. We are going to say that we don't want this to loop, and the start lifetime is going to be very small, like 0 0.2, and the size is going to be 3, which is 3 times bigger than the projectile itself. And now something weird is happening, the size of our lifetime is not taking effect, because we are too close to the particle. 
And if you go down here to the render, you need to set max particle size to 3. So it doesn't shrink if we are closer or farther away. Right, so that's it. Now let's duplicate this particle system for some particles, where we are going to use a shape. We are going to use a sphere shape, actually, with a radius of around 0 0.2. For the burst, we are going to use around 10 particles, or 15, that should be enough. And we also need to decrease the start size to around 0 0.05 and 0 0.4. And the start lifetime is also going to be rendered between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6, as well as the start speed, which is going to be random between 5 and around 20, so we get these nice punchy particles. If you want to stretch them, you can go down here to the renderer and switch these to stretched particles and set the speed scale to 0 0.05. Right, so once this is done, we need to create a prefab out of this impact. So drag and drop it, just like this. You can delete it from your scene after you have created the prefab. And let's go back to our projectile script, because now we need to create a public game object for this impact prefab. And we are going to instantiate it exactly in the position of collision, which is co.contacts0, the first element, the first collision, dot point, which is a vector tree. And then we can say quaternion dot identity, which is the rotation of the prefab. And then as game object, we want to make sure this is a game object. And then we can destroy it after around two seconds should be enough, right? Once you save this, once you go back to the inspector, you need to assign the impact prefab to the projectile impact, just like this. And voila! Once you test it, you get this awesome impact with the arced projectiles in our first person perspective. And this is the essential part. Obviously, there's a few more things that I did and that you can do as well, like creating another prefab for a muzzle and then instantiate it every time we should. And then in my case, I created the rig for the ends and made a few simple animations for when it's shooting. <laughs> Nothing really special. And that's basically it. With this technique, you can also shoot any projectile from my package, for example, which I have in the asset store and in my Patreon, links in the description. Basically, once you import the package that matches your render pipeline, if you go to the prefabs, you can duplicate one and remove this script. We don't need it. And add the projectile script we created. Then you can go to the heat folder and choose any impact you want, any effect, assign it to the projectile prefab, and then choose any muzzle that you like. And that's as simple as this. So that's it, guys. The whole project is available on my Patreon page. If you want to support, I'll have the link in the description and you get access to all of these and even more. A big thank you goes to each one of my patrons that are supporting me and a special shout out to the top tier patrons which are 3 Fix, Angel R Dev, Barry, Goblin Plague, Asan Kaluf, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himerai SPC, I Am So Faking, Josh McCormick, Kojo Puni, Luo Chang Chen, Morgan Payet, Nico Sherp, Per, Regan Nade, Tamari S, TK, Victor Nathan, and Yong Shin. So that's it guys, I hope you have all enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you in the next one, thanks for watching.